All right, guys, so I am here. Um, just kind of finishing up what I started. I'll show you what I did on the other chassis. I'm actually going to take this one away. And what we're going to do in this stream, because I was kind of too tired last time, was to get the pots done. So this is the actual chassis we did last time in the last stream. Here are the new pots that I installed. It came out really great. They fit pretty much perfectly. Um, and then I also put this thing on here. This is like the cardboard. I actually made a template from an old one that I had and I just take cardboard and put it on there. It's like that really thin cardboard. And here's the other thing, see? These are them right here. They came out really nice. So we're gonna concentrate on that. I'll kind of like wait for a little more people to get here and then see uh, if we can continue over here. Hey, Jose, it's live right now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to set a time, but um, YouTube kind of, it's weird. Sometimes they ask you for the time, sometimes they don't. I still got to figure it out. Not really an expert at it yet. Uh, still trying to work out the kinks, but for now, it is live. I actually forgot. Let me go ahead and uh, put my little animated bug in here. There we go. So we're just waiting for a little more people to get here. I might start anyway because uh, I want to go to bed. It's a little late. But uh, I did do this, like I said. These are the ones on there. There's these over here and these over here. They replaced the really old ones, um, which are pretty crappy. These are really, really nice. They're custom made from uh, Arcade Parts and Repair. I believe he's the only guy that has them for the GL7. You can't even get them on Mauser or anything. He has these custom made. So uh, they fit perfectly. They look great. And they work, they're really smooth and nice um, when you have them on. They work really well. So let me go ahead and put this other chassis back here. So these are the old ones here. See how they're uh, very brittle? These tend to like, I mean, they're not as bad as the, the uh, K4900s, but uh, still, you know, sometimes they have problems. So I suggest always swapping them out if you can. Uh, the kit, I think, is only like, I don't know, $7, $8. These are them. This is the main PCB kit. And this here is the neck PCB kit. So there's two different ones you can buy from Arcade Parts and Repair. Um, and they're pretty simple to follow. And then what else do I have here? This is the main. Yeah, this is the neck kit. This is the main kit. And I actually have an extra main one here, so I'll put this one away. And then the other thing that I have is this here. This, this I probably won't install because mine is fine, but this is a B plus pot. If you ever need to swap it out, it's an exact match. Um, I mean, it looks like it and everything. Um, still kind of the crappy design, but still if you have one that's having issues on you or it's glued or something and you need to move it, you can put this in. But for now, I'm not going to do that. That's this one right over here. I do not need to swap that out. So I'm gonna put this away as well. Um, this chassis that I have here actually does work. So, you know, I, you know, I'm not going to change this out just yet. This is actually the width coil that's broken on this one. You can see the piece on top kind of just snapped off. So that's it right there. I'm just going to leave it because it's set correctly and, uh, I'm not gonna worry about it, but I do have one on order. I actually had the one that I was supposed to use for this chassis, I actually put in the last one because I didn't realize the last one was broken. But those parts are on order, they should be here soon. Um, but I'm not gonna swap that out in this video. I did it in the last one so you guys can see. But this is a whole different chassis. I capped everything today. Um, this time it only took me about 10 or 15 minutes to do the whole thing because I had already gotten used to it. Um, and I do wanna change out the FR401. So what I may do, I should search for that part. I have it somewhere. Let me see if I can go grab it real quick. And in the meantime, I'll wait for the room to fill up a little bit. I'm actually on my wireless mic right now. So I'm just going into my parts bin here. And let me see if I can find it. I might have stuck it in my other bag here and my parts. Let me go over here.
All right, let me actually log in as well on my phone just to make sure everything's going right. Let me look uh, and do this. I also got to make sure I have sound. I usually double check myself here. Yep, sounds like I have sound just fine. All right, great. Okay, cool. So, uh, Jose, you're asking, you have a baby pack, you need to do the caps. You have a spare chassis from a Mrs. Pac-Man Cabaret, and they are the same. Um, do you know what model that is? So I ordered the correct cap kit, haven't looked recently. Um, you know what? The model for that, most likely, the most common one, you probably have a uh, Wells Gardner K4800, but you could have a G07 uh, FBO. Could be one or the other, which is uh, Electra Home. So I would double check on the back. Um, if you want, send me an email, just send it to uh, dellsarcade at gmail.com. You could just send me a picture of it and I could tell you exactly what it is just by the picture. So, uh, and then you could just order it. There are sites, I should, uh, you know what, just email me and I'll send you some sites. Um, Arcade Parts and Repair has pictures of chassis as well. So you can kind of look on their page and you can see what you have and then order the parts from there. But most likely that's what it is. I have a 13 inch, it's a 13 inch monitor, I'm pretty sure. Mine is a 4800 that I have in my cocktail, which is 13 inch, but those might have G07s in them. But they're not the CBO. The CBO, which is the one I'm working on today, these are 19 inch. The FBO, I believe, is 13 inch, which is like in the cabaret, um, you know, Ms. Pac-Man. Cool, no problem. All right, so I'm looking through all my parts. I actually have a whole bag full of stuff. I'm just gonna empty it and I should have done this ahead of time, I just forgot. But I am going to grab, there's a fuse, Usable resistor that I already prepared for this. Ah, here it is. I'm just going to throw it on there. And then, this is a little hint, guys. This right here are, these are lighted comb buttons I got from Arcade Shop. I am going to do a cloak and dagger um, restoration control panel. So that's coming soon. I got to work on the video. I already unboxed it from GAC. Uh, GAC built. You guys already probably know Gak. He um, hooked me up. He gave me the bro price. And, uh, you know, I'd mention it. And he just said, hey, just as long as you do a video on it, that'd be cool. I said, no problem. That's what I do. So I'm really excited. When I opened up the box and I saw, you know, I had it, I had it for a couple months actually sitting there. I decided to open it up today and it got me all excited to do it. So <laughs> I'm going to do that. For sure. Oh, let me take this one. That's more parts. Okay. So I have a whole bag full of parts. I have a whole bin. Um, all right. So this here is a fusible resistor. We're actually going to put this in first, so I won't forget. But what this is is um, on ArcadePartsAndRepair.com. It's actually it's 68 ohm, two watt fusible resistor. Um, it goes into FR401. That's like location on it. But normally they look like normal resistors, which, let's see if I can pull one out here. I mean, I could just point one. Resistors kind of look like this here, or like these small little ones here. Uh, let me see where else I see it here. Yeah, these are all resistors right on there. So basically they're just the small little striped things with the colors on them. This one has it too. I'm actually gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see that. Can you see that? So that, that's it right there. And what I did was I, all I did was I uh, use shrink tubing around it because you have to have it go off. It gets really hot and you have to have it off of the chassis, not flat because you don't want to have it conducting any heat. So you have to kind of build this little bridge and then you just, you know, put the shrink tubing all around it. So it's nice and insulated and it comes out really good. So what you're going to replace, and let me zoom in a tiny bit here. Hopefully you guys can see. Um, 
<clears throat> let's see, where is it? I believe it's this one right here. I'm going to use my, my famous pointer, <laughs> which is this right here. And by the way, guys, uh, the next stream, most likely, I ordered about eight of these. So I'm going to have uh, some giveaways on the next stream, I think. And I'm putting everything together and we're working with this tool to adjust everything. So if you're looking for this tool, I know someone already asked me, um, you know, tune into that stream and you have a chance to win it. So, so this right here, let me actually go to my other view so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay. This right here is going to be replaced. I believe it's an old fusible resistor. It's kind of ceramic. These tend to fail a lot. So when you do a cap kit, everybody says to swap these out on the GL7s. So you actually replace it with something that looks completely different, which is this what I showed you here so you want to be able to just take that out so I'm gonna go ahead and desolder that uh, hopefully that's not too close like I didn't want to zoom in all the way so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing but so FR 401 is right there it's these two I'm gonna take my Hako I'm gonna go in there and there's one there's two and it comes right out now it doesn't matter which way you put it in there's no positive or negative so you don't have to worry about that but this is it you see how it's like kind of like the legs are covered with shrink tubing that way it doesn't short anything out and it's up off the board so this is kind of kind of replace that except a little more modern more robust um, and it's gonna last forever so change that out these things are like a dollar I want to say a $1.75, maybe $2, and you get three of them when you order them from Arcade Parts and Repair. And then the shrink tubing, you just put it around it and heat it up with a lighter or something in it. There you go. So I'm going to take this. I think it might be a little off. I just have to get the bends correct. So I'm trying to find a, somewhere where I could put it where you can see it while I'm working on it. So I'm just trying to get the bends right so that this one I did a little too wide here. So I'm just going to take this, bend it, Straighten this one out. So it looks like there. And there. Alright, so that looks more like it should. Just want to get this. Yeah, that's pretty close. Alright. So let me go ahead and put that in. It goes in these two slots right here. There's one. That's it. So that's how it's going to look when it's done, but I'm just going to solder it in. So I'm just going to flip it over, put that in. So I'm holding it with my finger here. You can see these are them right there. And I can zoom in a tiny bit more for you guys. So this is it right here. And it says, you can see FR401. It says it right on the board up there. Maybe I can center it a little bit for you. There you go. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab some solder just gonna tack it on here and you can see the smoke is actually blowing the other way because I have that fan going to suck all the air out there's one and now that it's tacked in I should be able to uh, do this one here and I'll redo this one now just to make sure I got every end of it. There we go. All right, I think that's good. So we'll check it out. This is it right here. It looks beautiful. So that's how it's supposed to be installed, just like that. So definitely want to replace that. This one here is super old and you can see some of the uh, just fell in there. That's some of the uh, shrink tubing from the other one. There we go. I just got it out, so that's it. All right, I'm going to take this, throw it in the trash. So, I actually ordered more of these because um, I, this is my last one. I gave one away to a buddy of mine. I had one for the one I just did, and then this one here. So, I ordered another one. It was, like like I said, almost like $2 for it. It was very cheap. You get three of them, and then I have it on hand in case I need it for a future uh, thing that I'm going to do. 
All right, so let's go ahead and since this is easier to do, I'm gonna probably switch these out. Let me zoom out here. All right, so these right here are gonna be the pots. These are the RGB pots and these are the, uh, I believe it's the overdrive, I forget. Um, basically this one is red and one is green. It only has two on this model. Some have three, they'll have six total, but this only has two and those three over there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just take it out. Now before I start, I'm just gonna open up the kit. This one is the neck one that we're starting with. So. Hey, what's up, Mike? It's Mike Currington, he's on there. Just joined, just gave me a super chat of $10, that's awesome. <laughs> There's Kapow, Kapow, it says Kapow's Arcade Adventures. Um, he actually is a buddy of mine. <laughs> you should check out his channel. He has a preview of a video he was giving, actually giving to me and filming for me. So I could put it on my channel. I wanna do a little video on like, stuff that he gives me and other people. Um, maybe I'll start asking for people to do arcade tours around where they live and then send them to me and then I can kind of feature them on the channel. But uh, yeah, he's the guy that you saw in my previous videos where he had the Star Wars arcade. It was a Star Wars themed arcade where he had like the uh, pink color of the walls was at at gray and he had the Star Wars machine and Return of the Jedi and uh, he actually gave me the Ms. Pac-Man that I have here. He's in a lot of my videos. He's my best friend since like I was uh, younger when we were in college. So anyway, this is the uh, the thing here. It's going to show you all the stuff and all the resistors and all that stuff. Um, I'm sorry, not resistors, but the ohms of each pot. So there's five of them here. You can't just willy-nilly put them all in. You can ask Kevin at CC Games. <laughs> He found out the hard way, but uh, you can't just put them in. They all look the same, but they're not. Um, some are 5K and some are 200 ohm. And what you want to do with this, um, based on where they are, like it says here, it says R105, R106, R113. It's labeled on here. So these three right here, it says R113, R115, and R114. So these I know on the side, I believe these are all the 5K ones and then 200 ohm ones are 105 and 106, which are over here. So there's 105 and 106. So those are both of them. And on the actual pots, and now I will zoom in for you guys so you can see. I don't know if you can read that, but uh, let me see what this one says. This one says 5K. The model, there's like a model number, very like, you're gonna need like a macro lens to see this see if I can get in there. Can you see that? No, see it's blurring. Yeah, it's too close. Let's try that. I'm gonna try to focus on that. But anyway, at certain light angles, you can actually see there's writing on there. And this one says 5K on there. It says 5K and then the rest of the model number. So this one here is a 5K. I'm gonna put that to the side. The next one would be, says 5K again. I'm gonna put that to the side. This one here says 5K, I'm getting lucky here. So those are the three that I need. And then these two, they actually say 200 on them. I'm trying to move them around on the light so you can see. Yeah, so these say 200 right here. And then, uh, so that's the 200 one. And then this is the other 200 one. So, and they all come, if you look at them here, they all come maxed out. See, there's like an arrow. This is how they would be installed right here, right? There's like an arrow, see that? So that's turned all the way up. So you can actually just put it in, turn it all the way to the left. You could use a regular tiny screwdriver, it's fine. They're made of plastic, so you can use a metal, it'll be fine. But I usually typically, I'll set them to the center. So that's that one. I'm gonna do it again for this one. So set that to the center. So I'm doing that for all of them, just to make sure that they're all set neutral. We're gonna measure them by the way. So if you're wondering like, well, what if you set it too high? What if you're replacing it? What if you don't wanna lose your settings? You can 
check it with a multimeter and I'll show you how to do that so that you can put it back exactly how it was taken out. So let me just check these again. This is 200, this is five, this is five, five, and this is 200, okay. So we'll start with the two over here. Um, you know what, I'll start with the three because this one's a little more complex with these wires here. See these wires uh, right there? They kind of block getting to the pots there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that, but I am gonna zoom out so you guys can see. All right, so these are them right here. And what I'll do is I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and take one of them out. Seriously, Mike, I know you're there, and this guy's always throwing super chat at me, <laughs> um, and giving donations and stuff, so if we ever hang out, I know sometimes you pass the Connecticut area, we definitely have to hang out, I'll buy you a beer for sure, a few of them, because he's definitely contributing towards the channel, which is nice, and it all goes back right back in, so, all right, so I took that one out, you can see it right here, now this one is set to looks like it's if you look at here this little nub on the left that's actually set all the way left but center would be up there so this one looks like it's turned down um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my multimeter and go ahead and let me use this as a table there my little cap and the multimeter that I need let me see what you guys are saying in chat because I can't really see at this point So I'm catching up, Mike is saying, I wonder why they don't make a heat sink for that resistor, that 401 that I just changed. I don't know, I think it's just that it gets hot. So um, the way it's designed originally, um, you know, it's kind of like that square thing. I guess it was just, it all came together like that and you just put it in. But uh, when you replace it, I remember talking to Peter at Arcade Parts and Repair, he told me that you definitely need to, uh, you know, to get it correct so that it's, it has like the, you're kind of simulating what the original design was but with a more modern part. So, uh, Jose, yeah, CC Games from VGO. <laughs> yeah, that's Kevin, that's Kev. Yeah, I'm friends with him. Um, I mean, we met, you know, through the hobby um, and he had a monitor that was broken and I said, you know what? I said, just ship it over to me. And he shipped it over, it was for a Super Pac-Man that he had, and I completely rebuilt it. It was a Geo 7, as a matter of fact, where I redid everything, I put that fusible resistor. He's actually the guy that I gave it away to. And I just installed the cap kit, and he's like, how much do I owe you? And I said, you know what? He hooked me up with sweatshirts and stuff and all that. You know, it always comes out in the wash and you pay it forward. So I paid it forward and I said, Merry Christmas, and I gave it back to him. And he said it worked beautifully and flawlessly. I changed all the pots on it too. And he was just floored because, by the way, I did wash this, so I washed his as well. He said it looked brand new because I did wash this. I stuck it under the sink. I've done videos on that. If you follow me on Twitter, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter if you want, by the way, too. I have the, uh, the account on there, so it's at Dell's Arcade. You can check it out. Um, and I do post pictures on there of stuff that I work on, so... Um, yeah, for sure, go on that. And I'm also on Instagram, so if you want to check me out on there, too. I have an account on Instagram where I post pictures and uh, like today I posted a picture of this, um, you know, that I was working on that. And then with Kevin's, I posted it on there and, you know, and of course, if you're not subscribed, feel free to do so right now. It's an awesome channel. Get a lot of content here. I'm trying to do more now with live streams because it's a lot quicker to do. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so getting back to this. So this is the actual pot right here. And what you do is you take a multimeter. I have these special tips on my multimeter. Normally you guys would probably have these on there. They're just the regular tips that you use. But I have tips on here that allow you to grab where all you have to do is just kind of just push them like this and they totally latch onto stuff that you need to latch onto. So I'm gonna latch onto this. What you wanna do is you wanna put the negative 
on this leg over here. It doesn't matter which one, left or right. As long as you do it the same way when you go to the new one. So if this is a new one, you want to also go on the left over here. And then you're going to go to the... Let me turn it on first, actually. I'm setting it to ohms. And then I'm going to set the other one right here to... Right there, and just put it on that center leg. So the positive goes on the center leg, and the negative goes on the left one there. And then on my meter here, if you look, I'll try to turn it so you guys can see it. That says uh, around, I kind of let it stabilize. It doesn't have to be perfect. It looks like around 83 point something. So I'll set it to 83. So you want ballpark. So I'm going to disconnect that now. And that was one of the three, right? Yeah. So you want to take this, hook it up the same way. You just put it on this left leg here. Put this one on the center. You could use alligator clips if you don't have these, by the way. Just take alligator clips and then clip them onto the, the actual um, probes. They're just super hard to hold like this and get a reading because as you do it, you have to turn it. So I'm going to put this over here so you can see. And I'm just going to dial it in until it says around 83. Okay, let me take this out of the way. Of course, there's a glare. There we go. So it should be around there. Uh, maybe I have the wrong reading on this one. So this goes off from zero all the way to 5K. You see that? So that's 5K all the way down to zero. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the other one again. It's very possible because it's all the way to the left that it's completely off and it's point something and I'm just reading it wrong. Oops. Let me just put that on there. Yeah, I think it's, it's less than zero because if I turn it up a little bit, yeah, see it goes to one. Yeah, so this one's set all the way to the left. I don't know. I feel weird putting it all the way to the left like that, but um, I guess I'll set this one to that. But a lot of times, since I have to recap it anyway, you always have to turn the knobs most of the time uh, to compensate for all the caps that are new. I'll just set it for the center and just leave it that way. But I just wanted to show you how to do it. I'm going to try it on another cap, maybe on the 200 ohms. It'll be a little easier. But for some reason, this one did not like what I was doing with the multimeter. So that was kind of pointless right there. <laughs> it's not as important with these caps. It's really important with B+. If you're ever doing the B+, you definitely want to measure what that was set at and then set the other one to be the same because you don't want to blow it if you have it turned up all the way and then you put too much volts through and it starts frying stuff. So let me look here. 5K. All right. So since these are all the same, I'm just going to stick this one in there. See it fits right on through the top there. It's an exact fit. So I'm just gonna hold it. And then what I like to do is to hold it on one side and kind of holding it and I'm just tacking it in there. Alright. So let me go ahead and do the rest now. So these are really like rewarding to do because after you do it and you see how nice they look, um, you know, it makes you feel really good that you did it yourself. So that's it. That's the replacement. It looks way better. It has a lot more smoother action. Like if I were to move it around, you know, this one, like kind of it slips out and stuff. This one, it just sticks right in there and it's nice and smooth and it works really great. So I'm setting that for the center. If you're unsure what they're set to, always set it to the center. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me take out the rest. I'm gonna try measuring the second one. Let's see if it comes out with anything. I have a feeling the 200 ohms are the ones that you can really measure, but maybe I'm just doing something wrong that I'm not. This one is almost out. 
got a little bit hung up there. There we go. So that's out. And I'm going to try measuring this one just for, just for the sake of doing it. I'm doing it off camera here. So you got red is on the center, black is on the left leg or the right leg. So this one says 4.15. So that makes sense. Yeah, maybe if something was just, it could have been, a, it might have been a bad pot. That's why I was doing that. But if you look here, it says 4.15, right? That's what I have it set to. So 4.154. So let me take this out. I'll take the new one. Make sure it's 5K. Okay. And I'm gonna hook it up exactly like I did. And this one says two because it's set to the center. So that makes sense because two and a half is about the center of five. So as I turn it up, I can set it to the other one. So let me just double check. I'm actually, oops. I'm actually hooking it up to the other one again because I can't remember what it was. Okay, 4.159. Oh, actually, let me go up a little bit. 4.168, okay. Let's go to this. So now I'm just turning it up to four point, oop, I went too far. They're really sensitive. Now that right there is pretty close. You could play with it if you wanted to, but you just wanna be in the general area because you're gonna end up adjusting it anyway because of the cap kit, it's gonna be a little off. Oops. All right, I'm gonna leave it right there, that's fine. So now it's in the ballpark. So the other cap, I mean the other pot, it's very possible that it was bad. So I'm gonna chuck it. So I tend to save these. This one seemed to read okay. I'm gonna save this as a spare in case I have a broken one. It's better than nothing, right? So I'm gonna save this in my parts bin. So let's take this out of the way. Let's go back to here. And we'll kind of slip this one in here. Should fit right in there. There's like these slots it fits right into. There we go. So now it's in there perfectly. Now I'm going to go ahead oops, and tack it on. Let me just get some solder here. I usually um, tack on the little pin on the front here. That's the first one. And once that's on there, it's positioned right. Then I let go and then I'm able to solder the rest like I normally would. So I'm just quickly putting that in here. Hopefully uh, my buddy Kaboom <laughs> is watching because uh, he has to install one on his outrun. He has a bad pot on there. Hopefully he ordered it by now. Needed a 500k pot there. All right, so that's in there, set perfectly. Now we'll do the third one. So take this out. So yeah, that first pot was probably just a bad pot. So it was getting these weird readings. So if that's the case, set it to center like I did. Um, that makes sense. If it's set all the way to the left, it was probably malfunctioning and the person actually tried to turn it. It was either on or off and they turned it to the right. It was really bright. So they probably turned it all the way to the left, but it was a broken pot anyway that wasn't working right. So that's why you want to replace them because those things are 40 years old. You definitely don't want them uh, messing with your monitor. This one is almost out. There's a little bit here I can see. All right, it's not coming out right there. I'm gonna put it on there. <clears throat> Multimeter is still set. 
Let me just set it again. So you're gonna set it just to ohms. I just set it to the ohm setting right there. <clears throat> and then you're going to take it. And it's gonna go on the bottom. Oops, it fell off. And that's gonna go to the top. And we'll see that this one is set to 40, looks like 40 even, a little bit less, 39.9. I'll set it to 40. So that sounds a little funky too, because it shouldn't be that high. So this is probably bad too. Yeah, this one was also set, see, all the way to the left. So this is probably broken where someone had it all the way up. It would either turn on or off, so then they had to set it off. So this one's gonna go in the garbage too. And I'm probably gonna set the new one uh, to center, which it already is right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and solder that in. But if you do have a pot that does work, <laughs> it should be like the one I just showed you, where it shows correctly, uh, the one before that actually. All right, so this one goes right in here. So I'm just popping that in there. And I'm gonna take some solder again. I'm gonna tack this one on there. All right, it's held in place. And then I just solder normally. So. There's one. And I'll take a look at chat in one second once I finish this last set here. And then I'll redo this one because that's just tacked on. Perfect. All right, those pots are in there. They look great, way better than these right here. <laughs> this is the only one I'm saving out of three of them. So those other were terrible, so I put them in the garbage. And you'll see, sometimes they're a little crooked. If you really wanna be picky, you can actually, um, you know, just do this. Make sure you do them all at once really fast. And then you can kind of position it where you want. And that looks like it's good right there. Yeah, they're all pretty good. I'm pretty happy where they're set. But if you really want them all even, if they're crooked, that's how you fix them. You just do that, what I just did. All right, these are good. We're gonna move on to the second over here. So these are a little trickier because they have this wire in the way. And a lot of times you have to remove this like tie wrap that's right there in order to get them to flex but you can be a little careful if you bend them there you should be able to get into them it's one two three it's just that one right there that's being a pain so let me try getting in there that one see i don't want to hit the wire oh that worked out if you hit the wire you end up melting it Wow, these will not come out. They're, they're in there pretty good. Let's get some more. Yeah, that one's loose, that one's loose. This third one is not. Let's try that. Yeah, this one's still kind of stuck. There we go. That's why Hako is great. So this one's out. Let's go ahead and measure this one. Take my multimeter, which I keep, I keep wrapping it up out of habit and turning it off. It's a good habit to get into, but. <laughs> so we'll put that one there. And before I do this, let me go back and see what you guys are chatting about. Wow, you guys are chatting up a storm there. Uh, let's see here. So, oh, Jose, you're in Jersey. I'm near there. I work in Jersey. <laughs> nice. Yeah, check out. Um, I mean, they're not going to be open now because of the COVID, but um, you should check out uh, Richie's Arcade. 
He's in Denville, New Jersey. It's Arcade 911. That's his uh, arcade. And typically it's by invitation only. Um, but it's usually there's a cover charge to get in and then it, everything's set to free play. But he changes them out every week. And he has amazing pinballs. He has one of a kind Wizard of Oz if you've never seen it. It's a one of one. Uh, he's friends with Jersey Jack. And I believe he made that for him. It says it's a Ricky, Nuzzle, Ricky Knuckles edition. And it's signed by the whole crew. It's pretty cool looking. So if you're into pins, uh, he has some pretty nice ones. And vids. He likes vids more, actually. So his vids, the monitors are all perfectly aligned. He's really a believer in keeping them pristine. So this one says... Oops. I'm going to kind of put it over here so you can see it. <clears throat> Let me go back so I can see what I'm doing here. All right, that says 100, 100.2. So I'm gonna take my uh, thing, put the new one on there. Same way. Oops. That's 93, which is almost center, which is what that one was. So I'm gonna set that a little higher Probably to 100. Uh, a little bit less. Yep. Wow. I couldn't have asked for a better one there. Yeah, that's good enough for me. That's it. You take it out. Put that to the side. And you want to go ahead and stick this one in there. And then I'm going to tack it in. See if I can get this here. So I'm going to put in this one first, the top one. It's usually the easiest to tack in. And that looks pretty straight. And move it a little bit. All right, that's good. And now I'm just going to do the rest. Just got to be careful with that wire here. So there's this one here. And there's this one right there. And then I'll redo this one. All right, that's done. Move that wire back. And we'll take this one out. So this one is kind of a pain. I gotta, uh, actually, yeah, it's blocking it, shoot. So the way this one's wrapped around, it's a little weird. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to feed it through because I don't wanna take that zip tie off if I can help it. I can always put a new one. I'm just being a little, uh, uh, a little anal here. I might have to take it off because I can't get to that wire. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Snip, snip. Just make sure you don't cut the wire here. All right. I'll put a new one in there. So now I have a little more freedom where I can move this around. you got to get it out of the way. So I'm going to take this one out first since it's right there. Gonna move this over here, get a better grip here. And this last one, I gotta move around to get to that. are coming out and yeah, there's still solder on them that one's out but that last one will come out so now I gotta move this over <laughs> yeah, you just gotta play with it you don't want to mess up the wires 
You can, oops, I just got a little bit, you saw that smoke? That was from uh, me going against this wire right here. There we go, so now it's out. So now I can go ahead and test this one. And my multimeter is right here. So I'm gonna take it red, black, and this says 59.1. All right, so let's take this out. And let's see what it's set to here. Yeah, it's set a little high. Let's turn it down. see what that says there we go that's good 58.5 59 it's close it's all you want you don't have to be exact all right so i think i can turn my multimeter off for good now and this can go in here let's pop that in there and i'm gonna tack it in Get in here now without touching anything. All right, let's see if I can get in here. Just can't get in there, it's hard. There we go. All right, that looks good. So now I can put all this back. Um, I may want to touch that up with a little bit of solder. It's a little hot actually. And then put all these wires exactly like they were in the corner there. Yeah, so I need some zip ties. I will be right back. So Jose, you say you prefer the live streams? <laughs> I prefer them too, but the editing ones are kind of fun. I have some music montages in there. I like traveling. If you've ever seen the um, uh, last credit series where I, not last credit, what am I talking about? The arcade hunting series. Uh, those are really good where you can go ahead and, uh, you know, you see music, I have travel montages and everything. Let me go ahead, I'm just grabbing some stuff over here, some zip ties, and what else do I need? I need that cardboard for the GL7. All right, and I think there's two for that, okay. All right, so I have the zip ties over here. And here's the thing that I grabbed. I wrote on it GO7 CBO, but like I said, I just took one of these old ones, which I think I have somewhere. What did I do with it? I had one on the side that I was working on. That all you do is you take that old one and you trace them. So I have like 10 of these just in case I need them. I label them and now it says that, so. I'm just going to take this, put it through, and this is just strain relief, that's all it is, because you don't want to yank these wires out, so that's all I'm doing. Um, what's good about the premieres that I do, by the way, um, Jose, is that if you want to chat with me live, even though the thing is pre-taped and pre-edited, um, you can ask me questions about it. So, you know, I have the live premieres where people can talk 
as I'm watching the show and, you know, interact with me. So if you're watching it live with me and have any questions, you could just ask me on the spot. It's pretty cool. All right, so this one, I think, if it goes in this way, I want it that way, but it's not going to do it right. So I'm going to put it sideways. It's fine. So these <laughs> are actual templates. They're actually made to be floppy and bigger. They're not supposed to be exactly the size of the board. Um, so if you're wondering why it looks a little bigger, that's why they're kind of meant to like flop around a little bit. But I'm being super neat about everything. And then these actually wrap around these wires here. flyback wires and whatnot, just for screen relief. Uh, let me actually put these through here like that. I think that's how I'm going to do it. There we go. So not too tight, just, just enough to keep it in there. The purpose of this is so that when you're working on it, you're working in the back of the machine, you don't want to brush up against it like that because it will shock you. <laughs> Touching these pins of all the resistors and stuff or the neck board, and it, it hurts. Um, you know, it doesn't kill you or anything. It's just very uncomfortable. That's the word, very uncomfortable. <laughs> so I always put these on all of them, no matter what. Uh, some of them already have them, some are beat up. So I have tons of them. I have ones for 4900s, K7000s, and G07. So this is good. Look how nice that looks. It's brand new. You know, I reflowed everything on this. You can see there's a new cap on there. I put a whole new cap kit on there. Um, <clears throat> I would love to change some of these out, but I guess they don't really, they're not really needed for cap kits. I might have to change these out. I'm not sure if these are good. Um, actually, they are good because it was a working monitor, but I do have these spares in case one of them goes out. These are the chroma transistors. If you're ever missing a color like RGB, um, what you do is you take one out and you swap them and then if the other color goes away and the other one comes back then you know it's a bad uh, you know uh, transistor there so these go for like uh, I want to say three dollars each so you know really don't have to don't want to have to replace them if if you don't want to I mean if you don't have to don't because they're expensive <clears throat> but that'll solve stuff I had ones on a k7000 that made everything blurry for some reason so I swapped them all out and it corrected the problem but that's what these are. So if you ever have issues with that, um, if you put brand one new, brand new ones in there and it still has that issue, it's probably the tube. Um, I've done rejuvenation videos on that. If you have a rejuvenator, you can always test your tube. You don't have to rejuvenate it. You can just test it to make sure all the guns are firing correctly. And the test pattern generator that I have, the TPG, which I gave away in a previous episode, uh, those you can set to have one color, so there's dip switches on them where you flick it and it'll be green only, red only, uh, or blue only. So it's pretty neat. It's made to diagnose everything and work correctly and work very nicely together. So, all right, so this chassis pretty much is done, um, except for the bottom, but these are here. So let's go ahead and do these right there on the bottom. You can see the big difference between the two. Uh, the ones on the top are way better. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and see if I can field some questions over here. What do you guys got for me? Let's see here. Uh, yeah, Mike, uh, Mike Currington. Um, you, um, you work in the medical field, right? Are you still working? Are you still out there doing your stuff? I know uh, you guys are on the front line. Yeah, I'm reading about Kevin. Yeah, I think he's selling stuff from his store. He's definitely closed. I mean, you know, the governor ordered everything. I think he lives in Ohio. That's where the store is at.
like you're saying live tech streams means opportunities to ask questions and see mistakes i don't make mistakes no i'm kidding of course i do everybody does um i usually a lot of the times if i make a really weird mistake that i know and i catch myself i end up um sometimes talking about it in my stream where i'll stop like if i do a speed speed run where i'm like doing everything really fast with a time lapse i'll actually stop the time lapse and say hey you know i lifted a trace here so this is how you repair it i'll do that in my editing too yeah i see you have alligator clips on your uh multimeter that's awesome all right see you later jose Nice. Yeah, this is set to replay, so if you miss this live stream from the beginning, you can always go back. You can go back now if you want to, but it's not going to be able to interact with me because obviously it's in the past. <laughs> Do you have a space harrier, Mike? I don't remember that. I don't know if Kaboom is still here. He might have left, but uh, Mike, you should talk to Jason Kaboom <laughs> because he uh, he was afraid to touch his Star Wars. I remember where his monitor was acting weird, and he did not want to go near it. And now, like he's ripping apart monitors all the time. He has a Tempest now, and you know he's really good with vectors, um, fixing them, recapping them, you know, installing mods, um, and also. Uh, you know, uh, monitors as well. So, and I think he just fixed his battle zone the other day. There was something going on with it. <laughs> Jose, you're back. I just realized that now. Yeah, I'm going to be going to sleep too. It's actually by me. It's about one o'clock. I'm on Eastern. Yeah, you're in the same time zone as me. You said you were from Jersey. Hey, everybody. Cheers to Mike. If you had a channel, I'd donate to you too, man. Um, he said he's a registered nurse at a hospital. You're stuck in quarantine at the moment. Oh, man, that sucks. Wow. Yeah, we're... Um, I believe it's not forced quarantine, but they really don't want people out. Um, the only people that can go out are like people are going to supermarket or doing like necessity stuff, um, getting gas, getting your car fixed, stuff like that. I actually have a Homeland Security uh, pass so I can go because I'm essential personnel as well. I'm sure you have the same thing where you're allowed to travel. Um, so if I get pulled over or something or they have a roadblock or something, um, you know, with the National Guard, which isn't here yet, uh, the National Guard actually is in New York. Um, I think in the New Rochelle area, they surrounded it and they have checkpoints and all that. I never go near that area, but if I did, I could probably pass in and out because <laughs> I'm a sense of personnel. But um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I've been working too. Um, but luckily, my job's awesome where you can't really work from home because all the equipment's over there. But, um, you know, it's, I work in broadcasting, so I'm not going to name the company, but um, the company I work for. Is on 24 7 you watch tv right you got to watch it somebody has to put it on the air so um yeah so i work with them and uh they've been awesome where they're giving me days off and i'm on standby so that they have limited personnel you know over there and so far everything's good i mean all the sports stuff has been pulled there's no sports coverage anymore even wrestling is not uh live truly live anymore <clears throat> because they don't have a crowd so uh, there's a lot less to do, but there's still critical operations that you need to stay on the air, so. Hey, no problem, man. Hey, Mike, if you ever want to chat it up um, on, uh, you know, I don't know if you're on Twitter and stuff, but I always message people on there all the time, so I could always just add you. I think you have to do a request for me to approve it, though. So um, I could always chat with you if you're ever looking for someone to talk to. I'm up late all the time. I'm working weird hours at work. So. So you said, Mike, you used to have a Space Harrier, Asteroids Deluxe, and Gunfight. Got rid of all of them before 2010 for various reasons, and I regret not having them. 
Yeah, I mean, um, Asteroids Deluxe, I guess you could find those. Gunfight you don't see often, but Asteroids Deluxe you see all the time. So you could always get another one, but Space Harrier for sure, that thing is uber rare. Um, it used to be like that with OutRun, but now I've seen a lot more OutRuns out there. People are snatching up the boards left and right on eBay. Um, I got, got to get rid of some of mine. I used to have six at one point. <laughs> and as you know, I had two outruns in my basement. But um, let one go to a friend of mine. His name is Bob. You've probably seen him. He's on the RGB channel. Retro RGB. It's Bob. Yeah, he actually bought my outrun. So he'll probably feature it on his channel at some point. Um, or maybe next time he comes over, he'll do a tour. And we'll do something, an interview or something. It'd be cool. Yeah, Jose, championship super sprint. Um, the super sprint, is that the color one or is that the black and white one? It's probably the color one. That one's actually a medium res monitor, which I've never worked on. I've only worked on standard res. Medium res is, I guess they're about the same. They're just different, but I'm really nervous because those are so rare. And if you screw them up, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any going back. These, I mean, they're a dime a dozen, these monitors. At least in my house, I have tons of them. <laughs> <laughs> I checked one time. I have 42 tubes in my house, including the ones that are in the machines. They're all either on the side here in storage, uh, waiting to be capped, or um, TV tubes, which are donor tubes. So I have a whole pile. I have, I'm looking at them right now. I have two, four, six of them. No, seven of them. Just standing here like a tower. Yep. Got to do it. Where are you going to find them? Nobody has them anymore. And a lot of the times the um, recycle places that you dump them off at will not let you take them. It's called scavenging and that's illegal because there's companies that pay to recycle that because there's precious metals in there that they recycle and once people dump them off it's technically their property. So you're not supposed to grab them. <laughs> All right, so, oh, before I do this, let me go ahead and open up that kit. So I could throw this one away. I already did that. Oops. These here, I like to keep in a little bag where I label. This says neck PCB pocket. So I'll, I'm going to keep the bag that I originally had it in. I'm sticking these spares in there. And I just put them in my parts bin. And if I need one in a pinch, and I don't want to use a brand new one, I'll just grab it from there. I'm just looking at my Hako because I see a little piece. It looks like it came out. Oh, there it is. It's on the side. Nah, it is what it is. It's fine. All right. Um, this is also from my parts bin, which I have to put back, but this is a, uh, is this the same value actually? 200 volts, 600 UF, 560 UF, 200 volts. I bet you this is the cap for that. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but I do not need it, so I'm going to go ahead and put it away in my parts right here. Boom. Yeah, it's really rare when you have to change out the caps. Um, Sorry, the uh, B-plus cap. That's if your voltage is off. I'm going to test the B-plus on there. I'm going to have a whole live stream episode on that, which is going to be cool. And I'm going to give away these during that episode. So these are awesome. They work really good. So they keep you safe. <laughs> and I found a distributor that has them, so I ordered a few. So, all right, let's go ahead and get these done, and then we'll call it a day. Oh, wait, I was going to do this. I can't forget. All right, so these are the main PCB pockets. Yeah, the uh, super sprint that you're talking about, Mike, in the chat there. He said he can't remember which sprint, super or championship, is two player and which is three player, but they're easy to jump in and out of when playing. Um, and the screen's easy for spectators to see. Yeah, because they have like an angle. They're pretty big, but um, yeah, the um, I'm trying to think super off road were also my favorites. There was super sprint, which I loved. Um, my son and I actually played that on, on our uh, Raspberry Pi, 
and the steering was pretty good. You hit um, D-pad, you hit left and right to steer, and it lets you skid, and it's really well done for digital controls. And uh, yeah, those were really fun, and so I love that. There was uh, off-road, there was super off-road, where you have the off-road trucks. Then there was that other one that a friend of mine, uh, Drew, had. What was that one? It was like a futuristic version of uh, Super Sprint. I can't remember the name of it. It's Armageddon or something like that. I forget. But uh, that one too was super rare because the pedals on those are analog. And they're really hard to... They're kind of squishy and weird the way they built them. And they're really hard to reproduce. So I can't remember the name of them. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you can't 3D print these. Um, you know, it's flexible and stuff. So, but it's awesome. I mean, it has the tip to adjust the pots, and then it also has this here, which goes into the, um, where is it, the uh, horizontal width coil, and it works really good. So, I don't know, but, you know, I found them and I ordered a whole bunch of them because, uh, Partly for me, like I want to spare, um, but they were pretty cheap. They were like, I don't know, a buck fifty each, plus shipping. So I just ordered a whole bunch of them just to have them. And then I said, why don't I just give them away? <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. So these look a little different just because they're different values probably. Yeah, this one looks the same here. Oh, it's because I had it on the wrong side. That's why. But I'm putting them all at the center, off camera. I'm basically just doing this. You know, just to put them all to the center. It's the first thing you should do with all of them. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and measure these. So these on this one, it says here, there's a, uh, looks like there's only four of them. There's two that are 200 ohm, one's 10K and one's 5K. So it's the same deal. You just look at them close up um, on top here. So they're gonna be listed right on top. So in this case, this one says, uh, looks like this is 200. This one here is five. No, sorry, this is 10K. Okay, so 200, 10K, let me actually write, Ten, 200, and then this one is, I'm looking at it off camera, this is also 200, and this one it should be the 5K, it's left over, yep, this is 5. So this one here is five. All right, so I'm just gonna look to see where they are. And if you look underneath, it'll tell you their position. It's really hard to see, let's see. This one is R406, 408, 422, and 504. So 406 is, this is 403. 408, 422. Okay, so they're all listed here. But you can also go by the top. I'm just gonna do that. So I'm gonna do uh, the first one that says V hold. That's what I'm gonna do first. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it. So V hold, according to this, he also lists that as well, because sometimes these are a little off on your chassis, the numbers, like on mine. So V hold is 10K pot. So let me go ahead and get my multimeter out. I'm just gonna do this the same way. Red goes in the center there. And this one says, two, 
2.02, I'll say. I just let it, yeah, 2.02 is good. 2.020, okay. Let's try a new one. Let's go here. Try to put it so you can see it. That glare just gets you, right? <laughs> uh, then now it's in the chat. Hang on. Let's try this. There we go. So I'm going to go down. Yeah, it's fine, too. So if you look at it, they're very similar where this is turned low. See, that's the center right there. If you can see that, I'll go a little closer here. But this here is actually uh, to the left. And then this new one here is, you can see it's pointing to the left there. So that's how you know they're good. And this is also a good one. So I'm gonna keep this in my parts. And it's 10K, so now I'm gonna put it in. So that's it, it's pretty simple. You know, um, the only hard part I think is just holding it in while you're attacking in the first one. I'm pretty good at it because I have practice, but. Um, you know, just do the first one right here. Tack it in there, pretty good. And then the rest should be good. I'll just check it to make sure it's straight. And do the rest. All right, that one's done. Looks great. Now I'll go move on to the second one. The second one is going to be VLIN. So if you look on the sheet here, it says VLIN would be vertical linearity. That's the first one. It's going to be 200 ohm. So let me take this one out. says 201.4 yeah so this one doesn't seem like it's good either it was turned all the way up too uh, yeah so if I mess with this right now it's not really gonna do much yeah so I would say this one's bad I'm gonna set this one to center so I'm gonna toss that one and that was 200 ohms so it's already set to center so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in Yeah, they may not look physically broken, but sometimes they're just not uh, good. So I'm just setting that one there, putting it in, and we'll, uh, we'll see where we can go from here. Packing that one in. <laughs> that looks good. All right, then I'll just tack the other ones in there. 
Let's see. Hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, yeah, you can. Perfect. All right, so that one's good. Now we're gonna go to vertical height. And let's see here. See this one now. It's a little tangled here. There we go. I'm going to set it there. Let's see what this says. 145.8. One four five point three. Okay. It's also which one was that? Vertical height. One four five point three. So that's also two hundred. Let's see what this is at here. That's good enough. Take it out. Pop it in. All right. Take this out of the way here. So now I just gotta tack that one in. Good. It'll hold it in place while I do the rest. Last one is each frequency, I'm just double checking. Horizontal frequency says 5K and that's 5K. Okay, so that makes sense. This one is set to three point, and that's oh, that's five K. Okay, I think it is. Yeah, it is five K. So three point five oh six. So. have to turn this up a little bit. That's good. Good enough. It's close. And now let's put that one in. Sticking it in there and 
tacking it on. All right. Great. So it's done. Let me just put all this in there. And then at this point, you just want to want to kind of examine the whole chassis to look for stuff to reflow. I know for a fact I already did that because I did a cap kit on it, so I already did that ahead of time. Let me put that down and put this to the side here. Hey, thanks for the good comments, Mike. He said, uh, I love that you test and demonstrate as you replace parts, Dell. Uh, it gives us a good idea of what to double check and when to do it. Hey, Jose, thanks for this uh, super sticker. <laughs> Those are pretty fun. I bought a few for, uh, I actually bought some from my own channel just to, I bought like a $2 one here and there just to see how they look. I was very curious, but thanks, yeah. You're one of the few people <laughs> that do it besides Mike. Mike does the uh, super chat, but stickers are cool too. I don't mind those at all. It's kind of cool with the animation there. Yeah, Irish coffee. <laughs> yeah, you know, Jose, half of the battle is having the wife buy into it, man. <laughs> hey you know what i should have used that i have it right here uh jose was saying i should have used this you're talking about this right solder pull it kind of like click it down and you heat it up and then takes it right out sometimes they work better there's been times where i don't get enough suction out of this thing for whatever reason and then this thing just takes it right out I should mess with that and get it done I should you know what let's see if I can uh, do something here is it I don't think it fits over that either oh yeah it does see how that fits over it uh, sometimes I don't have a nozzle big enough to do that I want to try it let me see if my old skills are good you have to have like 10 hands is the only problem so let me turn the soldering iron back on. I'm going to try taking one of these out. I have to take this out anyway, but I don't want to completely take it out because I want to see how it goes back in there. Uh, but let's see here. Yeah, these are them right there. Let me zoom in too. This gave me a good challenge. See, this is why we do it live. Let me put my tools on the side. I'm going to try to get right there. So these four. So I just want to get like one or two of them. There's guys, um, you know, since I work in broadcasting, um, the engineering guys from my old job, they'd be doing this like nothing, like with their eyes closed. They'd be like, whap, 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 because they didn't really have this tool way back then. And they, they were just really good at it. <laughs> I had to mod my Xbox one time, my original Xbox, and I was so scared to solder. Can you believe that? Now I do it myself, but back then I was nervous. So I brought it into work and the engineering guys were just like, they did it in two seconds and they kind of laughed at me. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna heat this up here so that it kind of sizzles and gets nice and, and I'm gonna see if I can, yep, look, took it right out. Let me try to, try to get another one. I'll try to get a close up on that. So this is it right here. Oh, you know what? I'm looking at the wrong, oof. Sorry guys, I must have hit it by mistake. Zoom, too much. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to move it over to there. So this is it right here. And 
Let me see how deep I can go in before it starts blurring. Uh, I can get to there. All right, so I just took this one out and it came out pretty good. I'm gonna try to take this one out next. So the other thing too is this end right here, you actually put it, I usually put it against my thigh and that's how you charge it up. And then you just press the button as you go and then put it against your thigh, you know, so that's your extra limb right there. So I'm gonna try heating this up, let's see. So I just heated it up, it's good to go. Took it right out, see that? <laughs> so it is possible. You know, it takes practice though, it does. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on um, because like I said, I don't want these to come out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it while I'm here. I spray it with some alcohol, 99%. And then I'm just gonna take this, clean it really good. Look at all that. That's all flux. And you could douse it, you don't, it doesn't matter. This is rubbing alcohol. I had this under running water like yesterday. <laughs> I washed the whole chassis, so it's no big deal. All right, let's try to get these other two out. See if we can still see those, yep. So let's charge it up. Yep, bam, took it all out. And then you gotta empty it, so let's do that last one. Is it not letting me? Yeah, it's stuck. Hang on. So this thing, that's the other thing, is that you have to keep emptying it. You have to twist it open and empty it. So let me do that real quick. It's been so long, I can't remember how to do that. All right, I think. Man, that's really in there. So yeah, I forgot, there we go. I just jammed it out really hard. And literally, you can see how <laughs> it just shot the solder right out. So this is a solder that got all on the inside there and it's all solidified because it's cold. But that's how it looks, yeah. So I tossed that out and now it should, now it works just fine. All right, so <clears throat> let's do this last one. Still see that? Yeah. Get it like molten and then boom, all out. So I'm actually watching my replay on my feed that's about 10 seconds behind just to see how I did it, what you guys are seeing. <laughs> so I heat it up right now. That's cool. Yep, took it right out. Cool. So let's go ahead and clean that. You can see, see all that uh, nasty stuff? That's actually the uh, flux that's been taken off the board. So these things are awesome. Um, Somebody suggested, I can't remember who it was. I know Mike, you were gonna send me some and then it, there was just an issue with my post office box. I ended up closing it cause I was tired of the, they were losing a lot of my stuff. <laughs> they were saying return to sender. I was like, what are you talking about? And then if they get it and it's too big to fit inside your, your place, they won't call you. They just keep it for a few days and then send it back. It's kind of annoying. You have to, you know, and there were times where I couldn't get there in time and it got sent back. Just a pain. So uh, anyway, I think you told me about those other Q-tips that worked really good that didn't really come off because I was tired of the lint getting caught on everything. So then I think Rob is one of the guys that watches the channel too. He was saying that uh, he uses these foam ones and then I researched ones on uh, Amazon and found these other foam ones and they work great. 
I wish they were a tiny bit smaller. I wish they had smaller ones, but, um, you know, I haven't looked that hard. I guess they do have smaller ones. But they came, it was like $10 for like a hundred pack of these. And they lasted, you know, they come out pretty good. Like over here, there's all that flux. I usually rub it on the side like that. Comes right out, yeah. So this is, oops, that's my multimeter telling me it's on. So that's it, I just, I love things when they look brand new. Like people look at it and go, whoa, you did that. They'll look at your monitor and go, wow. You know, some people say, who cares what's on the inside of machines, but I care. I think it looks really cool that you have attention to detail. Like if you look at my centipede, um, I redid and I washed that whole block on the bottom with rubbing alcohol um, and simple green and it came out looking not brand new, but it looks pretty new. Way better than it did with all that crud on it. So that's it. It's important. You gotta keep everything clean so it works. Yeah. <laughs> My kung fu is strong. My solder fu. <laughs> That's what they're saying in chat. Uh, I just shut this off. If you guys want to see, I will show you uh, a bonus thing of me emptying my uh, soldering gun there. So this thing is done. We'll call it a day. It's done. It's awesome. It's good to go. So actually, it's almost done. I still have to replace this uh, thing right there. This is a horizontal width coil. But in general, this is done. I'm really happy with it. Nice and clean. Good to go. And it's awesome. I should do a video with this entirely. That'd be fun, right? I don't know. It'd probably be three hours long. <laughs> but, uh... Let me just make sure I'm putting all this stuff away. This is the main PCB pocket. So I'm going to keep the bag. And I'll put these in it. So I know nice and labeled <clears throat> so I'm gonna keep all this stuff together <clears throat> man <clears throat> I got like a frog in my throat I apologize um, I'm gonna keep all this together that's there and that's there oh you know what I forgot to show you shoot Ugh, I meant to do this well you know what I don't have to turn on the soldering iron I'll just show you so on this board, right, there is a cage that's normally over these areas. So there's actually three caps that you need to get to that's covered. So this is the cage right here. It's like a some sort of RF cage that solders in there. So that's how it comes. That's how it's supposed to look with this thing right on there like that, see? And um, in order to get that off, you have to desolder right here and right here. It's like the two metal tabs that it's attached to. And then slowly, with effort, I mean, you know, if you don't, if you're using this, it's gonna take a longer time. But with my desoldering thing, it took two minutes. So it basically comes off. And some people use it, some people don't. I don't know if you need it there or not, but I'm gonna put mine back. But what I'm gonna do, I'm not sure. I know this works for sure, but I think I'm gonna take the better of the two chassis and use that for my gap plus. So one of them is missing i'm going to put this on the one that i'm going to use on my gap plus <laughs> so i'm not sure which i want to put it on yet so i'm just going to kind of just leave that there and i'm going to store it and then depending on which one i use that's the one i'm going to put it on and you'll you'll experience that video too because the next stream maybe the next next stream not the next one the next one's actually going to be probably gameplay video i want to play my rolling thunder again or millipede i haven't played that in a while um Yeah, so that's it. I just emptied this by doing that. Uh, there was something I was gonna show you, another bonus. I can't remember what it was. Uh, let me see. I can show you what I'm working on in the future. You guys wanna see that? I know Mike, you'd like that. You said you were in solitary confinement there. <laughs> so, this is a little preview because I'm about to end the stream. Here is a 
conversion. It was actually um, a game called, um, it was by Sharp Image, not Sharper Image, but it was Sharp Image. And it was a game called, uh, I want to say Green Beret, but it's not that. Oh my gosh, what's the name of the game? I had it on the side too. But anyway, it's my buddy's game, um, and he wanted me to rebuild stuff. So I contacted Gak, and he uh, basically wants to convert, or my buddy, the guy Kaboom that you saw in earlier, wants to convert it to a uh, cloak and dagger. So this here, you can see the grommet's totally broken inside. I already looked. You see that? <laughs> and so they need to be rebuilt, plus they're really stubby. The reason they're stubby is because these are really meant for metal control panels not for wood and somebody actually uh it's a pretty big hack job where they grinded it down and they made try to make these skinnier and they grinded this over here like they did a really terrible job so i'm going to take these two joysticks i'm going to restore them i'm going to put brand new grommets that i have on order we're going to rebuild the whole thing and have one button on there i have the cone buttons that you saw earlier and i will show you the cloak and dagger that i just opened today I'm just grabbing it over here on the side. So first of all, I want to say thanks to my buddy, Gak. He has Gak built stuff. He makes amazing products. And what he did was, he made this. <laughs> it is a uh, cloak and dagger control panel. It's hard to see, because I'm not as zoomed out, but uh, everything's riveted on there. And it's all in there, so it has all the screws and everything that it needs to mount the joysticks. You can see it's GAC built, which is pretty cool. So I cannot wait to start this project. I opened it today. I hadn't opened it in a couple months. It was just sitting on the side. Um, and, you know, and then what's cool is that he has the overlay as well. And this is the overlay. So coming soon, Cloak and Dagger. We're going to have a restoration on that where we kind of put this all the overlay on we get the joystick dialed in we change out the grommets we restore the joysticks put the button in the button i have here you know i already got the leaf stuff going it's going to look similar to this when you put it in you know um it's going to be awesome so this has the two little tabs so i believe it goes in this way i just got to put it in there but anyway so it has a red button here it has the red ball top joysticks here and then right over here um, on this side, you can't really see it, right there, you have the cone buttons right there and there. So it uh, should be really cool. I'm going to be working on that. That's going to be a video that I'm shooting because I need to edit. Um, but it's going to be the same, you know, with me introducing it and talking about it. Probably have me like, you know, on this table and maybe even on the floor on a wider shot. Not really sure I want to shoot it yet, but it's going to be really fun. It's going to be an awesome video. <laughs> And I did a little teaser um, where I put the Cloak and Dagger board set. Uh, I put a little piece of it where it says Cloak and Dagger on it on my uh, Twitter, if you guys caught that. And it was for that series where we're going to do the restoration. So um, because Gak hooked me up with this, um, you know, um, I'm definitely going to have a video that's really well, well done. And it's going to promote his product, which he does a whole bunch of stuff. He does lighting signs, too. I wish I can get a light, a lit sign from him that basically has a marquee, but he has them. So Gak does all that stuff. And, uh, you know, once we do the control panel, we'll head to his house. I already got footage of the before where the he has this green Defender machine that's in pretty rough shape, which is why he wanted to convert it. You know, you never want to destroy a Defender. But a Defender was an official, there was an official conversion kit for Cloak and Dagger for Defender. And uh, so he was really happy that he found the Defender cabinet that was already painted over and sanded down and all that stuff. So he's going to go ahead and convert that to a Cloak and Dagger with the side art and everything. It should be really, really badass. He has all the boards already. Control panel I'm going to give him. Um, I got to build the harness for that and everything. And it's going to be a cool little project. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, and then my millipede, I am going to finish that up, um, with the overlay. So I'm going to put a new overlay on that. That should be cool. I have to remove it. I'm just waiting for it to get nicer out. It's, uh, you know, with all this virus stuff too, it's kind of a pain, but I can just go in my backyard and work on it. But it's been pretty crappy, either co too cold 
where um, you know the paint can't cure or it's really nice uh, temperature wise like in the 60s but then it's raining <laughs> so once the weather gets better I will do that and then I really want to get my gap plus done too because I already have the gap plus board and uh, you know it's fun it's a good uh, good project it's a fun game uh, I experimented with Galaga 88 on a 412 and one I ended up returning it it was horrible um, I'll have a video on that too where I review that board so I have a lot of stuff in queue, just no time to edit. You know, I'm not home stuck in quarantine like everybody else. <laughs> and when I am, I have my family here too. So I gotta you know, do stuff with them. All right guys, so thanks again. If you're here, uh, thanks for hanging out. You know, it's kind of late. Um, I'm gonna try to get these scheduled, but today I was like, again, I was like, let me finish up these pots and I wanted to just get it out to you guys. So, so again, thank you again if you're a subscriber. Um, we're gonna we're pretty close actually to 4,000 subscribers. I can't believe it already But uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well. And of course, I'm on Instagram Where uh, I post pictures of stuff and things that I'm doing all that kind of stuff. So uh, Yeah um, That about does it. Let me go ahead and get my end page up and I'll see you in the next one guys All right Take care